there are a lot of drummers out there that are still quite interested in the whole gospel and R&B style of drumming, particularly the fiddles. You know, they hear dudes like Aaron Spears or, you know, Gerald Hayward, people like that, and they wonder, you know, how did they come up with these fills? How did they always come out on the one? Blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to show you exactly how you can practice this. I'm going to show you what's in it. I'm going to teach you the mechanics of this fill. This is a lot easier than you think. And then I'm going to show you exactly how you can start to work on it. Now, although it takes um, a particular skill set to be able to pull these fills off tastefully and, uh, you know, always on time and stuff like that, um, the foundation of the fill is real simple. The only thing you've got to remember is that regardless of what you're hearing, how, however crazy, bananas, nuts the fill sounds, um, the only thing that you really got to know is that when you break them down, they're nothing but creative distribution of either the triplet or the sixteenth. All right. So I'm going to show you now, um, I'm going to take you through, I guess, what you might consider a, a time-lapse photography of uh, the evolution of the gospel film. I'm going to start with the triplet, and then I'm going to add all the elements to it. And by the time you get to the end, you'll know exactly what's inside this film. And then afterwards, I'll show you how you can start working on it, and then you know, you'll be up and running in no time. So hopefully that little demonstration was a good example of the mechanics of what's inside this type of fill. When you start with the fill, you work your way backwards, you realize when you get to the back end, it ain't nothing but a triplet. That's it. So all you're really doing is you're taking that triplet, you're going to distribute it tastefully around the kit using random accents and different stick. That's all it is. That's why, again, like when you hear these, when you hear these monster fills being played, and boom, they always come out right on the one, it's because all they're doing is playing the triplet inside that spot. They're just doing it in a, in a more creative way. Or 16, whatever, you know, depends on what tempo they're playing in or whatever, but um, that's all that's really behind it. So I'm going to show you now how you can work on it. Now, um, you don't necessarily have to be on the kit to do this. As a matter of fact, it's probably a good idea that you stay off the kit for a little bit until you get, you know, what's going on with the hands behind it, all right? So it's real simple. All you're going to do is you're going to practice playing a triplet on your practice pad and slowly work your way into the idea or the concept of randomizing your accents and using different sticking. And the best way to, to do this, like 
what honestly all you really need is a single and a single pair of them. That's it. In other words, if you can play a single and a double, then you can do this. Um, the popular types of sticking for this uh, or for these types of fills, at least for me, I found, is uh, it's just a lot of different variations of the single paradigm. You could play it frontwards, backwards, um, whatever. You can invert it, you can displace it, whatever. But single paradiddle is generally a good uh, type of sticking to, to distribute your accents over your toms and, and stuff like that. And then afterwards, you just work your speed up, and then you take it to the kit, start replacing some of those notes with the bass drum, and you're good to go. That's, that's really all it is. So, um, so for the beginners out there that want to get into this, turn on your metronome. I don't have one here, but turn on your metronome and uh, just start practicing playing the triplets. And get that triplet inside of your head so you hear and you know what that triplet sounds like around the pulse. And then just start, even if you just want to start using a single and throwing your accents in there. start there and then the next step would be to play the same thing continue to play the triplet but um, when you go to play your accents now try to use various uh, combinations of singles and doubles to play those accents And that's really all it is, man. Like after you get good, good at that, take it to the drums. Start on your snare, and whatever accents that you're playing, just spread them out. Spread them out to the toms. So you can, you know, end on your floor tom, end on your high tom, whatever. Just, just spread them out evenly. Stay relaxed, and. Just get really comfortable doing it. Start out slow, because muscle memory has a little bit something to do with this as well. So, you know, that's going to become important when you when you really start to play up to speed on a drum. So that's all it is, man. Just um, start on your practice pad, work on your triplet. Um, you know, practice randomizing your accents using different stickings, and then take it to the drums, and then slowly, you know, sort of work your way into it. Eventually, involve the bass drum to break up the, the sort of flow. It just adds a nice, interesting texture to the fill. And, uh, and that's it. Boom. You're playing the fill. So work on that. If you got any questions, hit me up. Send me an email, whatever. And uh, I'll try to help you out.